Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Mathematics. This is Matrices. My name is Nate Nestler and this is for Hyperactive Studios. Now you may notice here I have a different application. I have both of them. I have Sage and Maxima. Uh, Maxima is really cool because, well first of all you can do the graphical um, 3D uh, graphing in here for your calculus 1, 2, and 3. Uh, well 3 for 3D graphing but this lets you sit there and try out all kinds of algorithms uh, directly in the application here uh, for, you know, if you're doing 3D graphics programming and things of that nature, it's very easy to use this for it. Uh, and also if you're just doing general mathematics, period, uh, for any number of scientific applications or anything out there, this is extremely useful. Uh, Maxima was developed by um, MIT, so it's pretty good. Um, well, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Maxima, <laughs> this one here, uh, and it's what Maxima is based off of, and that's actually what um, you know, Maple and Mathematica get uh, a lot of their inspiration from is the original Maxima from um, MIT system. So, um, you'll if you're familiar with Mathematica or something like that, you'll find it very close to uh, you find that Mathematica is very close to this or whatever. Um, so it's not bad, and it's free. It's open source. It's excellent. Um, it's really nice. Here's the actual application. It lays things out very easily. If you're familiar with how this stuff works, and I'm going to go through how it work, how to use it, and how it works. It does not use Python for its scripting. Um, it has its own little scripting language, kind of more like JavaScript, I would say, if anything. But um, it's not bad at all. And there's ways of you know putting in text blocks and everything. It lets you sit there and like you know collapse different areas and expand it back out and all this stuff. It'll print out very nicely and easily. So this is very cool. It also displays things in a very nice, pretty uh, layout here, where you can really get a good idea of what an algor algorithm will look like um, exactly. So that's really nice because uh, you don't always get that, I'm afraid. So uh, ha have it where you can have an algorithm display um, in a uh, nice, clean uh, setup here is very desirable. And this application absolutely does that. So it makes algorithms very readable. Um, I have had it uh, calculate things when it was impossible to calculate something. So be aware of that. It will not give you an error message in certain circumstances uh, when it shouldn't be possible to do something. It will actually give you a calculation. So be aware of that on Maxima. Um, Sage will give you an error, uh, which is nice. But Sage doesn't look as pretty or as clean uh, for its presentation, I'm afraid. So, you know, it's up to you which one you prefer more. Both are good. Uh, both are very good. Um, and this one uses Python. So, you know, that's nice if you're a Python programmer. Um, this one doesn't have like a, an interface to help you easily find your way around in the mathematics. You really need to read the documentation a lot. This one's got all the you know functions and stuff right up here at the top so it's very easy to use so far as ease of use this one Maxima is actually easier to use I think um, from an interface standpoint and you have to go through less in order to get it installed and working and everything so this works out to be a pretty nice solution here and it is using WX Windows which means it runs on Windows, Linux, Mac OS X, everything it's a cross-platform compatible Windows development system okay so with all this said, um, very nice. Uh, and then I also have documentation here in English or Spanish, Portuguese, Brazilian, etc. Uh, all kinds of tutorials in here. And they have little basic tutorials for how to do stuff and whatnot. Um, I'm going to have to show off how to do a few things in here because some of the stuff's not quite straightforward as you might think it would be on doing some operations. You might think, oh, I used a regular multiply operator. Uh, not quite for certain things. For certain things, yes. Other things, no. So we'll go over variations in there. And after you're done with this series of mathematics, you'll know Sage and Maxima, and you get to choose which one you like better and use that one, you know? It doesn't matter. It's whatever works best for you. Okay. Um, so first off and foremost, what is a matrix? Well, a matrix is basically a set of columns and numbers here. Basically, columns and rows, sorry. Uh, they're filled with numbers or variables or whatever. And uh, we can use it to represent blocks of data. Now, um, as an example of what you can do with a block of data here, we have two different formulas here. 
So x, y, and then equals whatever uh, this is equal to here. And then same thing here, x, y, and whatever is equal to there. So we can just basically take the x's and put them into the what would be called the x column here, the y column, and then this would be the what's equal to. Sometimes you'll see representations of this drawn out where they'll actually have a little line drawn through here to help denote that, hey, this is um, where things are getting equal to in the actual um, formula. So that makes life uh, a little easier. I can't represent that in this program, but uh, you can see that sometimes handwritten that way. Okay. So, and then you can apply all kinds of operations on it. Uh, because they are just individual algorithms like this, uh, different formulas, if you will, for each row here, um, I can swap the rows around. So you can do that. You can swap rows. Uh, you can compute one row into another row. So say I want to add these two. I can add both of these rows together and then apply the computation into this row here. So if I did 4 plus 7, I get 11, right? So I would replace this 4 with an 11 right here and then negative nine plus three would give me what negative six and the negative six is going to go right here and then twelve plus four is going to give me sixteen and sixteen would go here so you know that just makes uh... interesting things so it'd be eleven negative six and then sixteen here uh... in place of it so that's also a possibility of something you can do with matrices um, and then identity matrix is kind of anything you multiply times the identity matrix will be itself so all you do is you just do a set of ones all the way down at a diagonal and everything else is zeros all around it. That's it. That's all there is to an identity matrix. That's how you make one. Um, here's another matrix. And I just threw in random data in here. Uh, more or less it's typed in random numbers and to create this matrix. And I showed, you know, adding the matrices and it goes like you'd think. All right, so here's our here's our identity matrix, and here's matrix B as it's laid out. And so if I add these, what's going to happen? Well, two plus one is three, right? Four plus zero is four. Eight plus zero is eight. Nine, you know, your nine right here plus zero is nine. And then we get down to 12, you know, 12 plus 0 is 12, and then we have 4 plus 1 is 5, and then we have 9 plus 0 is 9, 3 plus 0 is 3, 14 uh, right here plus 0 is 14, you know, 5 plus 0 is 5, and then we're going to get down to the next one here, 6 plus 1 is 7, right, uh, 1 plus 0 is 1, 7 plus 0 is 7, 3 plus 0 is 3, uh, 1 plus 0 is 1, and then 5 plus 1 is 6. So there I am adding those two matrices, and that's how it works. And it also has what's called commutative properties, which means that it's a fancy mathematics term to say that I can... Um, <laughs> Add it. Uh, I can add it uh, either side, either way, right? So I can say B plus I here, or I can go I plus B, either way, and it's going to work. And I'll get the exact same result. That's the important part of that. Uh, and that's exactly what you see here. I get the exact same result. And the reason why, well, not in a, an effort not to bore you, I'm not going to go through and walk through going. Uh, 1 plus 2 is 3, <laughs> 0 plus 4 is 4, and so on and so forth throughout this entire matrix. I just went through it one way. It's the exact same thing. It just works both ways. Um, okay. We also have subtraction. And yes, we can subtract um, our matrices too. But you'll notice that this is not commutative. You cannot sit there and have it go. You can't. You won't get the same result if you say I minus B versus B minus I. And that's real simple as to why that is, right? All you have to do here, in this case, you know, you have, um, you, know, you have I subtracting from B, so it's going to make B basically negative throughout if you do a distributed property of multiplication. So basically all you do is you say um, 1 minus 2 gives you what? Negative 1. You know, 0 minus 4 gives you negative 4. 
0 minus 8 gives you negative 8. 0 minus 9 gives you negative 9. 0 minus 12 gives you negative 12. You know, and then you have, um, uh, then you're going to have, yes, yeah, so I was going to say it should be 4. Yep. And you have 1 minus 4 gives you negative 3, so on and so forth all the way throughout. Uh, 0 minus 9 gives you negative 9. 0 minus 3 gives you negative 3. 0 minus 14 gives you negative 14. 0 minus 5 gives you negative 5. Uh, 1 minus uh, 6, I believe it is, yep, gives you negative 5. Uh, 0 minus 1 gives you negative 1. 0 minus 7 gives you negative 7. 0 minus 3 gives you negative 3. 0 minus 1 gives you negative 1. Uh, 1 minus 5 gives you negative 4. Here's the five. <clears throat> so you know that's how you're gonna get negative numbers. If I flip it around the other way, then I'm gonna get same basically same values except for not negative because I've reversed the order in which I'm subtracting. Okay, and then there's multiplication. All right, multiplying two matrices is a whole nother ballpark. Um, we'll get into how to do that. We're going to uh, spend a little bit of time here <laughs> going over that. That is not so straightforward or simple. Um, let's look at what has to happen for that to occur. OK, so this value here needs to match with this value here in order to multiply the two matrices. Um, and then you'll end up a resultant matrix of that right there, so 4 by 1 versus a uh, four, uh, and we have a four by four here, making it compatible. So you, know, you just read it across like that, more or less. Okay, and that's exactly what I got here when I uh, multiply these together. Check it out. If I multiply C times B, I get a four by one matrix here. Or it's uh, columns first, and then rows second. So yeah, four columns, one row for numbers. And that gives us our vector. And you notice we had a vector over here. And yes, a 1D matrix is a vector. Same thing. No difference between the two of them, uh, really. So you can take a vector and throw it into a matrix and represent a vector as a matrix. Uh, in this case, um, in order to get things to multiply out as desired, I'm going to do a 4 by 1 even though I might have an XYZ matrix here. So I put a 1 here at the end for handling the data to get things to multiply out correctly in the matrices. So that makes life nice and easy. Um, the, uh, so this would be like X, Y, and then Z here for Z uh, value here. Okay, And then when I multiply it through the matrix for B, um, yeah, as you can see, here's your B matrix, right? Then I end up with this for result. You might be going, well, how did you get that result there? Uh, that's a good question. So let's look at how you actually go about solving for this. And I like the vector one for going through how to do this because it makes it shorter. Because going through a full-blown one is going to take a while longer to talk about. But let's have a look at what you go through and what you do. Okay, so this one's going to be quite simple. Um, what we do is we do, uh, depending on the order, uh, either do column times row uh, in succession here. So 2 times 3 is, you know, going to be added to uh, 5 times 12. So you can see how we're going across our uh, row and then going down our column as we do this, right? Um, 2 uh, times, uh, right here is 2 times 14 here, plus uh, 1 times 7, all right? Add all those together, and then they get put in the very first value here in this particular column, like so. So if you want, you can draw it out where you like do a strike through this one, strike down like that, so now you know which ones you're adding and multiplying together. Um, and same thing goes over here for the next one just as you would suspect. So 3 times 4 plus 5 times 4 plus uh, 2, 2, sorry, 2 uh, <laughs> times uh, 5 
and then uh, 1 here times 3 here and we multiply those and add those together like so and that will give us 45 and we put it in the next slot here and this is let's go by a uh, this is a simple matrix we'll go do a more advanced one here next okay and a uh, 3 all right here so we have our 3 again right but next column right this column right here this column right here yep all right so we have 8 times uh well sorry say 3 times 8 here 3 times 8 right and then we have our um let's see here is it 5 times 9 5 times 9 plus uh 2 times 6 2 times 6 and then 1 time I'm oh, sorry <laughs> then 1 times 1 and all those added together gives me 82 put it in the next slot like so okay last one here for doing this matrix multiplication very nice um, alright so we have 3 times 9 plus uh, and that's 3 times 9 plus 5 <laughs> 5 times 3 alright 5 times 3 getting added together to 2 times uh, 1 so here's this 2 here. We'll apply times this 1 here. All right? 2 times 1. And then we're going to have a 1 times 5. And then, oh, accidentally clicked something that I shouldn't have done, I guess. Uh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Didn't mean to work to do that. All right. And so then we have uh, our 49. And our 49 gets stored right here. And then that computes that whole matrix. And of course, that works just like I said it did because when I did it in the program, it actually kicked out the exact same values. So that's how the breakdown works. That's how you get those values. And that's how it works underneath the hood, uh, which is nice. Okay. Here is a more complicated, fully involved one. So you might be going, okay, well that's nice, I understand that, but how do I multiply two 4 by 4 matrices, you know? Because I need to also multiply my transform or my rotation matrices or any of those kind of matrices together um, for doing different uh, positional movement of a 3D object, for instance, based on points. Um, well, that's no problem. Uh, we can do that. It's just going to be more involved. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and we're end up with the same result. And this proves how an identity matrix works. Okay, here we go. So we're doing I times B. So I is going to go before B. So 1 times 2, because again, we're going to go across. And then, oh, sorry, we're going to go across my mistake and then down on this one right because I is first so we do it going across because it's first and since B is second we're gonna go down on the column alright here we go so 1 times 2 is 2 uh, yeah plus uh, 0 times 4 and then 0 times 8 then 0 times 9 right going across Oh, I switched it around. Sorry. I did a uh, B times I. Oh, well. That works, too. Instead of doing what I had up here. You get the same result either way. You multiply because it it's commutative on this. Uh, we'll go over the rules for multiplication of matrices here in a bit. Uh, normally, matrices are not commutative, but the reason why you can do it either way is because it um, is a 4 by 4 matrix. And I'll show how that works out here in a bit. But anyways, first and foremost, let's go over this some more up here. Okay, so um, that works out for that one. Going down. All right, going down on the next one. Zero times two, so zero here times two. One times four. Um, yeah, so here's our four. Here's the one. Um, I'm switching it around. It should be f four times one. So I stopped caring about the order so much when I typed this up, I guess. Alright, so it should be 4 by 1. Um, 8 times uh, 
zero here, and then we have a nine times zero there. And of course, these all get multiplied by zero, so they all get eliminated. You only have one times four, so we end up with four. And of course, the four gets stored here. So we had the two get stored there first, and then the four got stored there next. All right, going on furthermore. All right, so now we have two times zero, four times zero, eight times one, nine times zero, right? So all those together, added together, you're gonna end up with nine because all these get eliminated, only one times nine is gonna be around, right? Sorry, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit here. Um, all right, some people are going, yes, thank you. <laughs> so our, you know, we have our eight in here, we have our nine in there, great. So next one here, so we have 12 times what, one, right? And then we're gonna have four times zero, so here's our four times a zero. And then we're going to have our um, nine times zero for the next one. And then we're going to have our three times zero for the next one. And that's exactly what we have here. And so, I'm sorry, that's exactly what we have here. And so we end up with 12 uh, there because the 12 was multiplied times one. Now for the next row. And of course that 12 gets placed right here. Like I said, when you multiply something like times the identity matrix, you get back the same matrix. Um, so four times, and that's exactly what's happening here, as you can see. Uh, okay, so we're going to do the next one here now. So 12 times zero is zero. Four plus four times one is four. Plus uh, zero times nine is going to be zero. And then three times zero is zero. Add it all together, you end up with four. So four goes into the fourth place. Um, all right, let's do the next one. We have 12 times 0 is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, 9 times 1 is 9, and 3 times 0 is 0. So that lets us end up with 9. And here's that whole layout. You can see that we just get this repeating pattern happening here. All right, next row and column set up here. So we're going to move over here to, um, and we already did 3. So we're going to be doing 14 times 1, right? And then, yes, it's as you thought here. So 14 times 1 is 14. 5 times 0 is 0. 6 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. So add those together, and you're going to get 14. Next one. 14 times 0 is 0. 5 times 1 is 5. 6 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. All right, add those all together. And you get five, of course, because the others get eliminated out and you only have five left over. All right? So we have 14 times zero is zero, five times zero is zero, six times one is six, and then one times zero is zero. So we're going to end up with six, right? Bam, there you go. All right, and moving faster. Well, maybe not faster, but <laughs> we'll try. Uh, 14 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, 6 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1. Add it all together, you end up with 1 right there. Next set, and going in, and of course that number gets put back here in 1. So 14 went to the 14, 1, 5, 6, 1. So you see where these are getting placed back. Okay, 7 times uh, 0 is going to be, I'm sorry, 7 times 1. I went up too high, didn't I? <laughs> 7 times uh, 1 is going to be 7, and then we're going to have 3 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is uh, 0, and 5 times 0 is 0. So we're going to end up with what? 7. Yep. And here it is, 7, right there. And that gets placed right here in the matrix. Okay? And next one. So we have 7 times 0 is 0, 3 times 1 is one, uh, 3. Uh, 1 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, so we end up with 3. There we go, multiply these together and add them together, and you can end up with 3. Okay, next one. Okay, we have 7 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1, and 5 times 0 is 0. So that's why we're going to end up with 1. Yep. And then that goes 
assuming I don't go too far <laughs> for once. It goes back in this one spot right here. All right, and then last one, thankfully. F 7 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, 5 times 1 is 5. I'll add it together, and we're going to end up with 5. And there we go, like so. And that, my friends, is how you multiply two matrices together that are 4 by 4 matrix. Uh, and again, this works because if I had a 4 here also, no matter how I swap up the order here, it works, right? This doesn't work, um, going to the 4 by 1 or 1 by 4, depending on your order. In this case, multiplying a 4 by 4 times a 4 by 1 um, in that order. The reason why is because these don't match. See, we got a 4 here and a 1. Um, and it would end up in a result of a 4x4, four four, which is impossible. So that doesn't work. The scary thing is that Maxima literally gave me an answer <laughs> to that. And it really shouldn't have been able to give me an answer, but it did. So uh, be careful of that. Um, this one works because, again, we have these two matching values. So we got a 4x4 um, four four here, so that matches, and we end up with a result of a 4x1 at the end. If I pull up Maxima real quick, this thing literally, and I'm using the exact same values, by the way. I could just call it A instead of B. Uh, I put I here for the identity matrix, and then all these mathematical operations work as you would expect. Uh, for instance, if I hit Shift Enter, it'll sit there and give me out a result on it. Um, and it works both ways. Shift Enter is how you make it execute something, by the way, on this. Okay. Da, 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 da. And I gave different examples here. On a maxima, it's a little different here. You have to put a dot for multiplying between two matrices uh, and not a star like you would normally between two numbers. If you want to multiply two numbers, you do the star operation uh, like, um, well, you would do this star operation like that. But if you want to multiply two vectors, you have to put a dot between them in maxima. That's different than what it is in um, a Sage. Okay, so here if I want to do a times v here, and this v is my vector here of 3, 5, 2, 1, um, I should get one result you know, versus the other result on it, which is kind of scary. Let me execute all the cells. Or maybe it won't. <laughs> you know what? I don't think I have to recompute maybe A over here. Let me see if I have to do that. Yes, these need to be recomputed. That's the problem. Okay, that explains everything. There we go. I was like, I'm executing it, it's not doing anything. <laughs> you have to use Shift A, um, Shift Enter, sorry, not Shift A, but Shift Enter in order to get to execute. <laughs> okay, and we'll get into determinants in the next video, uh, there, and transpose, and some of this other stuff that we really just don't have time to cover right now. Um, but, okay, so say I get those computed, okay, there we go, and I get something impossible right there. Now, you remember in Sage, it gave me an error, remember, because this was impossible to do, but it didn't give me an error inside of Maxima, which is interesting. It actually gave me a result, which is impossible, um, so be aware of that, be careful of that. That's uh, not doable. Uh, because you can't, I don't even know what happened. Uh, but yeah, anyways, we got a result that we shouldn't have gotten. We'll also go into how to inverse a matrix in the next video too, along with the determinants and the transposes and the other stuff here. Um, but this is nice too. We can also lay out, okay, yeah, we'll get into this in the next video. There's no way I'm getting into this in, right now. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, definitely next video for that. Um, but you can see how this works and lays out in here. 
Now remember you have to hit, hit Shift Enter. Uh, F5 will give you a new cell, which is really nice, uh, wherever it is in here. Oh well, it's F5 by the way to get you a new row of cells. All uh, right here, insert uh, input cell. You can also do a text cell, so you can just type in something if you want. You can do a subsection, a section, a title cell, a page break, insert an image. I mean, this is really nice. This really lets you lay out if you need to write up some kind of mathematical uh, paper or sheet or something like that. This really makes it nice for doing that, and it presents it in a very nice, easy to understand method uh, and way of displaying information. So. Here are some text cells that I put in. Uh, I believe it's an F6 there. If you want, you can insert a cell in between it, just like by selecting that there, and you get this full line, full on line here like this. If I hit F5, bam, it lets you create it. If I click in here, this lets it, this little corner here, this will collapse the cell and let you click it in. It'll expand it. If I click on the whole entire, um, in the, like outside of this little dot here, but rather the entire um, piece here, like this one here would be, like so check it out, hit the delete key, it will remove that cell. So that's important. Okay. But that lets you do all kinds of cool stuff for setting this up. Um, also a really nice function of this is, it's a little bit confusing though. Say I want to add a new uh, matrix in here for this one. Which is really nice. And if I come in here, instead of saying generate matrix, let's say enter matrix, right? I can tell how many rows I want. Maybe I want it to be a 4x4. Four four. How about 4x4, four four, not 4x34? Four That'd be really big. And I'm just going to stick with general, and then I can give it some kind of name if I like, like capital Z, for instance. I don't know. And then I can just proceed to enter in whether I want to enter in uh, variables or uh, numbers or both or whatever. I can do that in here. I can enter in whatever I want into these uh, columns and rows, and it'll create my matrix in that manner. So if I do, you know, I know I'm hitting random stuff. I apologize. I'm just whoa, got a big one there. <laughs> I don't know. I'll just leave that at zero for one of them. I don't know. All right. So say it's like that's the matrix, whatever. Okay. So it creates that matrix for me, and automatically executes it out here. So very cool. And now I have my Z matrix here. And that's all you have to do in order to add a matrix to this thing. You do need to put a semicolon at the end of when you're typing in a line. If you do not, it will not execute properly. So make sure you do that. A semicolon always goes at the end of a statement, if you will. Uh, just like it does in JavaScript or some of those other scripting languages. Okay. And then you can also simplify expressions, simplify radicals, factor expressions. I mean, just all kinds of awesome stuff in here. And it's very easily uh, obtained. There's not much to this um, program once you get a little used to it. Uh, plot 2D and 3D works a lot like Sage's. It's very close to that. So you don't do much different there. You can also set your precision. Um, all kinds of wonderful stuff here. So just be aware of that one little thing where you can actually have it compute something that's not com possible to compute. But otherwise, I mean, it can integrate stuff for calculus. Uh, you know, basically mostly calculus two and three for integrals. Um, very in a calculus when they do the most simple integral known to man practically. Uh, after that, we get into real integrals and calculus two. Um, you know, and they got a lot of other types of methods here, uh, along with uh, you know derivatives and and everything else in this setup here, which is very nice. Um, so it's extremely useful and eigenvalues, and eigenvectors. Uh, I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, we'll get into transpose matrix uh, later on here. We might go back and go over eigenvalues and eigenvectors sometime for matrices. Um, all right, solve. You can do different solve type methods to find a answer to something. Um, it's really great. Um, it's got a lot of really awesome powerful features in this program so uh, really nice uh, setup here the important thing I think I was hand executing each one of these but I believe if you go because this is the way some other math programs work if you go into the very first cell and then say uh, evaluate all cells from there it will actually yeah execute all the cells executes the cells from where you put your cursor that's important if you just say evaluate all cells it doesn't evaluate all the cells in the sheet 
I tried that earlier and it didn't do it. But you notice when I put my cursor up here at the top cell and then did it, it did it for the entire sheet and just went through and just executed all the ones down here. Which is nice. Okay, so that's all you have to do in order to, you know, re evaluate everything like right away. Okay. So that covers um some aspects of the matrices. We got over add, subtract, multiply. Um multiply matrices. You can multiply a matrices by a single value and have it go through each of these rows and columns one by one. So if I wanted to do a negative two times A, let me show that real quick in here. I'll just do it in this program. It's fine. I'm just gonna say oh I tell you what, I'm gonna do it right up close to where that A is so that way it's not getting confusing here. So that's a really nice aspect of this is we can easily just, you know, get ourselves close to where we want to be and then you know like okay so if I want to do negative two times a I could do that shift enter and there we go so here you can see that negative two is getting distributed throughout this whole matrix so negative two times two is going to give me negative four so on and so forth for every single entry in this matrix going all through it and bam there you go so that's also possible we can multiply values uh, or add individual values also to the matrix. I could have added two here, for instance, instead. It's like, for instance, if I do this right here and I say two plus A, shift enter, and check it out, I get two added to each value in here throughout the matrix. I could also do subtraction too. I could have done a negative two instead. It doesn't really matter. Um, but you can see how you can take uh, individual values and send them throughout the matrix and manipulate the data in the matrix. So that's why it's so useful for computer science or for doing uh, programming is because you can sit there and take these blocks of data which would be more like an array inside of uh, programming or if you're dealing with some of the 3D graphics languages they literally have matrices as data types and they also have vectors as data types and you can do it also within C++ with a certain particular setup for uh, vectors and such, uh, actual vectors with a special mathematics scientific library. But anyhow, this lets you um, take these values and very easily manipulate them within your programs to make it do all kinds of crazy stuff. And this is useful for all kinds of scientific applications, not just programming, but you could use uh, programming in order to solve for different processes or different problems in different areas of science. So extremely useful for many uh, aspects and for many respects and um, I hope you enjoy this because we're getting ready to go over the next one uh, this will be extremely beneficial to you in understanding how these 3D graphics uh, programming aspects work without going through the matrices with the vectors it's you can't hardly do step one and understand what on earth is going on you know without going through this stuff it is so so important Without it, you just there's no way you're going to understand it, what you're doing. You're just typing in stuff, and at that point in time, you don't know what you're doing, and then you can't um, make it do something special or custom. You can only copy what other people have done, pretty much. You won't be able to understand what it is you're doing or to drive your own methods for solving things. So it's a very important uh, thing to have an understanding of these aspects of these mathematics, because uh, it is the core foundation of the 3D graphics programming. All right. So with that, uh, this concludes the first part of Matrices. Um, my name is Nate Nessler, and this is for Hyperactive Studios. Thank you very much.